Are we really talking about the Lions window closing? Give me a break. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Matt Derry with you. It's another week of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day on a Monday, March 18th, and a Tuesday, March 19th. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts that includes. Please subscribe to our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. We are over 10,500 subscribers. Coming up on the show today, an ESPN talking head says, nope, Lions windows closed after one year. We will play you the disturbing and stupid comments coming up momentarily. It is Mock Draft Monday. We got a mock for you today that goes a different direction for the Lions at number 29. How about Hall of Fields, huh? Hoo-hoo-hoo, baby. That's some hall the Bears got. Uh, What hall? And uh, I have a quarterback question I'm going to throw out today right here on this Monday edition of Locked on Lions. We are brought to you by the Game Time app. You want tickets? Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Follow us on Twitter at Dairy Speaks, at Locked On Lions, Matt Dairy Facebook fan page on Threads at the Real Matt Dairy, and also, like I said, on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. All right, so Friday I get somebody on uh, Twitter at Dairy Speaks tags me on a tweet from the Mike Greenberg radio show. Now. For those of you that, that that are big ESPN fans or used to watch a lot of ESPN, go back in the history books. Go back and say, you know, I'm going to sit around with my buddies and we're going to talk about our favorite ESPN personalities, right? Chris Berman, Scott Van Pelt, Stuart Scott, uh, uh, John Buchagross, uh, Mike Tirico, right? Uh, maybe you're a big Kirk Herbstreet fan. Maybe you like Pat McAfee. What about Chris Fowler? Right. A lot of great classic ESPN. Keith and Dan, right? Oberman and Dan Patrick. Come on now. Not never on the Pantheon do you ever hear anybody say, you know, I really like Mike Greenberg. Greeny. I'm a Greeny fan. Does he have any fans? I can't believe he's even still on that network. Like the morning show, uh, 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 Mike and Mike in the morning, that, that went on for a long time. Those guys were very, very successful. Uh, when I worked at Detroit Sports 1051, I begged management to take them off the air because we needed a local morning show. You know, if something happened the night before, or big uh, game, piston game, wings game, a Lions played on Monday night, whatever it was, wake up the next morning and you're listening to Mike and Mike talk about LeBron, Tom Brady, and the same national topics over and over again. Be that as it may, Greeny is still on. Apparently, he does a midday show. I know he's on the show Get Up because I see the clips all the time on social media. Well, he was on his radio show over the weekend, uh, at the end of last week, and he was talking about the NFC North. And I want to play you this audio because Mike Greenberg decided that he was going to put out a hot take about our uh, Detroit Lions. Um, I call it a hot take because I think it's absolutely outrageous. So let me get this all queued up. I'm going to play this for you, courtesy of ESPN, right now, right here on Locked on Lions is courtesy of ESPN Radio and the Mike Greenberg Show. Take a listen. I think Detroit had it. Like, like their window. I think their shot to win the championship was last year. Explain yourself. I think they're getting surpassed in their own division. I think Green Bay is now better than them. I think Green Bay was 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 a coming, and I think Detroit had it. Like, like, look at all the t- throughout history. Look how many teams lose games in the playoffs, deep in the playoffs, and we think, oh, man, well, that was just the beginning. You know they'll be back. How many times is that team not back? The Lions had the 49ers dead to rights in their own building in the NFC Championship game. How about when Buffalo lost that game 13 seconds against Kansas City? Well, that was a heartbreaking loss, but you know they'll be back. They'll obviously, they'll clearly take that one more step. How's that worked out? 
Cincinnati in that Super Bowl against the, the Rams. Oh, the, the, look, look how close they've come. Look how good and young their quarterback is. Oh, they'll certainly be back. How's that worked out? I'm old enough to remember Dan Marino getting to the Super Bowl against Joe Montana, his second year in the NFL, set the world on fire. Oh, Marino, the first of what will unquestionably be five Super Bowl appearances, never got back. You miss that chance, you miss that chance. Green Bay is going to be better than Detroit next it's year. It's an interesting point. I hadn't really thought of Okay. There's Mike Greenberg and whoever his co-host is that chimes in on ESPN Radio. Lions window is closed, according to this guy. Um, every example he gave, I could counter. Every single one. Remember when the Chiefs lost to the Bucs? So we want to play that game? Kansas City lost to Tampa Bay in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady beat Patrick Mahomes. What happened after that? Kansas City not only has been back, they've won two. What about when uh um what about when Dallas lost? Came back. What about when the Cleveland Browns lost in the AFC Championship game in 1986? Came back the next year in 87 and when they were in the AFC Championship game. Came back to the AFC Championship game in 1989. I mean, if we're just talking Super Bowl, we're just talking championship game, what, what are we talking about here? How many times did the Michael Jordan-led Bulls lose? And Greeny should know that because he's Mr. Chicago. You know, I worked in Chicago. I love Justin Fields. Justin Fields is going to be the next superstar quarterback. That's what Greeny said. Now his boy is shipped off to Pittsburgh. I mean, we can go other sports. We can stay with the NFL. Do you want me to talk about Philadelphia? I mean, when the Eagles window was closed, they went back to the Super Bowl. They lost in the title game, what, year before or two years before that? Every example he gave about Dan Marino, I can give others. What about when the Patriots lost to the Giants? Did there Was their window closed? No, they came back and won a handful of Super Bowls twice after losing to New York. Sometimes you do have to lose to get back. That happens in many sports. The Pistons are an example. The Red Wings are an example. Remember when the Red Wings lost to the Devils? Did we just say, map windows closed. They were right there. Won't happen for them. He went on to win four cups. Four. All right. Come on. That was after losing to Colorado and after losing to New Jersey. I keep going. To sit here today on March 18th and have to argue that the Lions window is closed is absolutely preposterous. The Lions are young. What 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 were his arguments? That Green Bay's better? You think if if Mike Greenberg thinks Green Bay is going to bypass the Lions, that's a decent argument. Green Bay is a good football team. Green Bay's got a good young quarterback. Green Bay's added some pieces. Is the division going to be better this year? Looks like it. We'll see how the Bears rookie quarterback does. It's still the Bears. What do the Bears ever win? Who's quarterback in the Vikings? All right. Green Bay's good. And yes, you want to make the argument that the Packers might bypass the Lions this year? Fine. There is such a thing as a wild card. Maybe the Lions get in as a wild card. Maybe they have to win an extra game. Was their path easy this year to get to the NFC Championship game? Getting to host a Rams and, Bu and, Rams and Bucks teams that weren't great? Sure. But to sit here and say, no, I think they had their chance and that's it. How could you say that? Who are the Lions' best players? Amon Ross St. Brown. He's a baby. Panay Sewell, third-year player. Aiden Hutchinson, second-year player. The Lions are young. Jared Goff isn't even 30 yet. Are the window's closed? What do the Lions do best? Draft. How could you say this? Oh, that NFC is just so tough. I, I don't know how they're going to be Dallas. They should have this year. Philly's good. Giants, Commanders, Panthers, Bucks. If you want to say the Lions are in a in a in a rough and rugged AFC, I maybe would I maybe have some art, maybe have some some leg work, leg leg work. You'd have some legs to stand on. They're in the NFC. The Lions are one of the top two, three teams in the NFC right here, right now. Oh, no, what if they have to play Dallas? Dallas loses every year in the playoffs, every year. 
So I'm sorry. I'm going to defend the Lions on this. Saying their window is closed is dumb. Oh, Dan Marino made it uh, one time, and that was it. Okay, okay. Dan Marino ever, ever have a defense? I can't believe I'm even having this discussion. All right, uh, coming up next, Mock Draft Monday. Let's uh, let's do the business right here on Lockdown Lions. Hey, did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another uh, other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim is of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss, limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of their first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA, available to U.S. customers in good standing, Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker-dealer. All right, I love this little mock draft Monday. We do this each and every Monday leading up to the draft, which, of course, will be right here in the city of Detroit, April 25th through the 27th downtown. Shout out to our everydayers who are out there watching or listening each and every day. Appreciate you guys and girls. Very, very much. All right. Our friends at the draftnetwork.com put out their mock draft for the post free agency. Ryan Fowler was the author. Now that Justin Fields is gone from Chicago, it's 100% happening that the Bears are going to take a quarterback at number one. And you have to figure it's going to be Caleb Williams. That was the number one pick in this mock draft at the draftnetwork.com. Drake May, number two to Washington from North Carolina. Jaden Daniels at number three. Quarterback from LSU to the Patriots. Arizona takes Marvin Harrison at four. LA Chargers, Malik Neighbors, a wide receiver from LSU at number five. Of course, now that the Lions have added a ton of cornerback help. Uh, Amik Robertson, Robertson was even in town today. Carlton Davis. Lions have converted some of his salary to a bonus, so they've freed up about $4 million of cap space. you got to figure that the Lions at 29 are going go, gonna to go offensive linemen to bring in a guard to replace Jonah Jackson, right? Maybe they go D lineman at a defensive, uh, at an edge to go with uh, Aiden Hutchinson, Aleem McNeil, and now DJ Reader. Not in this mock draft. Ryan writes that the Lions at number 29 are going to take Adonai, uh, uh, excuse me, Adonai Mitchell, the wide receiver from Texas. Watch highlights of Adonai Mitchell. Every single one is a deep ball. This guy just runs past everybody. Um, everybody. So a wide receiver at 29. Ryan Fowler, the author, writes the following. Uh, Adonai Mitchell and Keon Coleman will be a fun back and forth over the next month or so. Scouts have paralleled the two for a while. Coleman was taken 28 in this mock draft by Buffalo. And one goes, expect the other to follow soon after. Mitchell is an extremely smooth mover on the outside with the get up and go to threaten teams vertically at six foot two. I mean, come on. Mitchell's been a stud at Texas for the last couple of years. He really has. Uh, he's been tremendous. Big body, great speed. Yeah. Would you love Keon Coleman? Sure. But I think what's interesting here is that the Lions could use 100% another burner on the outside. All right. Donovan Peoples Jones was re signed. Uh, this weekend. So he's back. You know, the Lions have Kali Freeman, Jamison Williams, Amon Ross St. Brown, Antoine Green. All right. At wide receiver. Um, Josh Reynolds remains unsigned. Adding Mitchell would be a big time piece. Now, again, some of you are going to go, oh man, just go easy and take a lineman at 29. Why would you take a receiver? You can get a receiver later. All right, it's a pretty deep receiver class in this draft. It is. Um, heck, Roman Wilson went in the first round to Kansas City in this mock draft. 
Uh, Xavier Leggett, we've talked about, went in the second round to Carolina at 33 in this mock draft. Um, actually, in this mock draft here, the Lions at 61 do get their interior offensive lineman. It's a two-round mock, and they get Christian Haynes, the uh, guard from Connecticut. Um, so they would get a receiver at 29 and an offensive lineman at 61 in big Christian Haynes. Uh, Haynes, by the way, 6'3", 317, was a third-team AP All-American the last two years. That wouldn't be bad. Would I take Mitchell and Haynes at 29 and 61? Yes, I would. But again, if you want a sure thing, if you want to know, man, I just know that this guy is going to be so, so solid at 29, you might not pass up a guy like Zach Frazier, the center guard from West Virginia, right? Um, in this draft, Kingsley Suamataya, the offensive tackle from BYU, who might be pushed inside for some teams, and his Penisul's cousin was drafted number 30 by Baltimore. He would actually be available for the Lions in this mock draft at number 29. But a wide receiver, uh, Adonai Mitchell from Texas at 29, and a guard at 61 in big Christian Haynes from Connecticut. Not a big surprise. Would I be good with that? I would. I would. Mitchell, man, he just, you watch Texas and every single time you see Ewers throw the ball deep, you know it's you know it's Mitchell. He's just every highlight. Go on YouTube and I don't know, don't I Mitchell highlights. And they're all fly patterns. They're all outside go routes. Now, can he do other things? Can he run the out pattern? Can he, you know, run a slant and catch up? Of course. But he's just got blazing speed and he's he's something the Lions don't have right now. I don't think Jared Goff is 100 percent sold on throwing the ball deep consistently yet to Jamison Williams. I think he would be with Mitchell. So there is your mock draft Monday right here on the uh, Lockdown Podcast Network. Um, by the way, I, I saw some people say this. You know, Justin Fields got traded um, this weekend and the Bears got nothing back. Nothing back. I mean, think about this for a second. There are people in Chicago, all right, that spent months, weeks, almost a couple of years defending Justin Fields like crazy. He was traded this weekend on Saturday to the Pittsburgh Steelers in exchange for a conditional six-round pick. It would be a better pick depending on how much he plays for Pittsburgh. He's going to Pittsburgh to be a backup Yet there were Bear fans and Chicago Sports Talk radio hosts that said, no, no, got to build around number one. You know, we just got, uh, uh, you know, we we just, we, we just got, you know, we just got help at receiver. We, we, we just traded for Keenan Allen. We got DJ Moore. We got a top 10 tight end and Cole Komet. The old line's better. The defense is better. No, no, no. Now's our chance. We gave Justin everything we need, he needed. Guys, he played for three years and couldn't get it done. He wasn't good enough throwing the football. And the Bears got a conditional six-round pick for him after weeks ago. There was arguments on whether or not they were going to keep him. He was going to be their franchise guy. Amazing. But here's the thing. Some Lion fans were hitting me up going, well, the Lions should have gotten him to be the backup quarterback. <laughs> there was no market for this guy. People were saying he had options. He told the Bears his favorite place to go is Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh was the only place that would take him. Philadelphia traded for Kenny Pickett. You don't think Philadelphia wouldn't have wanted Justin Fields over Kenny Pickett? Sounds like they didn't. And they, all he would have had to send was a six conditional six-round pick. They'd rather have Pittsburgh scraps. And by the way, Kenny Pickett, I think, is a better passer than Justin Fields and had a terrible offensive coordinator. Not that Luke Getzey was great, but you know what I'm saying. But this notion also that there's some Lion fans that, hey, we should have had him as our backup. No, no. I don't think Brad, I don't think the Bears were doing that in the division anyway. But it's amazing. And you look at these quarterback classes, and I'm going to get to this coming up next. This is why having Jared Goff is so vital to this team. 
because it is a total crapshoot the last couple of years drafting quarterbacks. It just is. Um, it's amazing. We'll get into that coming up next right here. It's a Monday edition of Locked On Lions. Folks, you know it, you love it. Game time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. That's because game time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. This past weekend, went on the game time app, went down to see the Indiana Pacer game against the uh, Brooklyn Nets, Noah Eagles Brooklyn Nets on Saturday night. Got some tickets on game time and it was easy. Got them sent to me right away. It was awesome. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I love that view from your seat because you can scroll right and left and see exactly where you were sitting in that arena. It helped me out for Saturday night. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. That's what I just said. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps with game time. Upper bowl, lower bowl, whatever you need, it is all right there. They got the tickets uh, for you at the start of the event if you need it, like five minutes before. Heck, even an hour in, you still buy tickets. It's the place to find last minute seats. Game time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, final thing here on Locked On Lions. And again, I've reiterated this numerous times on this very podcast, but anybody that thinks that the Lions should wait on Jared Goff or or maybe it's Hendon Hooker time or any ridiculousness like that, need to remember something. Lions did draft Hendon Hooker last year and he's going to develop and maybe be the backup. Who knows? Lions don't have any other backup quarterbacks, at least on the roster as of right now. Um. But I was thinking about Kenny Pickett, and I was thinking about Justin Fields, both getting moved over the weekend. Pickett to the Eagles and Fields to the Steelers. Um, for those of you that say, well, you know, maybe we just let Goff walk, and then we draft a quarterback. Hold on a second. The 2022 draft that featured Justin Fields, or 2021 draft, excuse me. Trevor Lawrence was the first pick at Jacksonville. He's been pretty good. All right. Is he a great quarterback? No. That draft also included Justin Fields, who was a bust in Chicago, let's be honest. He's going to be a backup somewhere else. Zach Wilson, whom the Jets can't get anything for. They've tried to trade him. No one wants him. Mac Jones, who was just discarded by the Patriots and now is a backup in Jacksonville. Um, Trey Lance, who I think is the third quarterback in Dallas, was discarded by San Francisco. I don't care if the first three picks this year are going to be Williams, May, and Daniels. I don't care if J.J. McCarthy becomes the Vikings quarterback. It's a crapshoot. You do not know if they can go from college to the pros and be successful. You just don't. These people that are saying, I think the Bears could catch the Lions once they get Caleb. Really? How many games did Caleb win this year for USC? Talented guy. But this is a different ballgame here, the NFL in college. The 2022 draft class. Kenny Pickett was just traded. He was a first round pick taken by the Steelers after he played a pit. He didn't have to move. He's now a backup in Philly. First round pick, Sam Howell, given every opportunity by Washington, not a first round pick, but every opportunity by Washington to be the commander's quarterback, was just traded to Seattle to be compete with Geno Smith, but he's not going to win that job. Malik Willis, the Titans have already replaced him, was taken in that draft. Desmond Ritter, here's the uh, here's the starting job in Atlanta, Des. Traded, gone. Couldn't win the job. Uh, they took Kirk Cousins now over him. And Matt Corral, I don't even know if he's even in the NFL. We watched him play in the preseason last year for the Panthers against the Lions. He couldn't complete a forward pass. So, yes. The Bears are improved. Yes, the Bears won seven games. I get it. They're going to be better. They just got a conditional six-round pick for their franchise quarterback, and now they're going to take one at number one, and everybody just just is going to think, oh, it's a lock. They're going to be great. 
There's no guarantees. Look at all these quarterbacks I just mentioned over the last couple of years, these draft classes. It could be tough sledding. No guarantees going from college to the pros. Um, so wild stuff. Wild. I mean, again, we were talking about Justin. Justin Fields had good two good games against the Lions this year. He did. He beat the Lions this year. Jordan Love, high draft pick, beat the Lions this year. But I like where the Lions are, quarterback with Jared Goff. I like you have a known commodity, a guy that consistently has played well the last couple of years, has been to a Super Bowl. Be careful sometimes wishing that, oh, well, just uh, this, this, this quarterback class is loaded. I mean, listen to Greg Cosell and others talk about some of these quarterbacks. J.J. McCarthy was an excellent college quarterback. I think he'd be all right in the pros, but you're not drafting in the first round just for all right. All right, we're back again tomorrow with a Tuesday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Oops, I messed that up. See you tomorrow.